Hear me? Okay? Everything okay? Very good. Um, all right, so um, my talk is about planning um, and how uh, it's super boring but super useful for when you're working on any sort of digital project. Uh, so a little bit about me. So my name is Philip Davis. Uh, I'm a former student from the University of Gloucestershire, did multimedia. Um, I was previously technical director, an uh, agency in town. Uh, I now run my own digital consultancy, uh, which works with agencies in town or direct clients, helping them uh, fulfill their projects and make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, and I also founded the Digital Cheltenham Facebook group, which is um, all the speakers are from Digital Cheltenham. And uh, it's basically a Facebook group online with all the agencies in Cheltenham, uh, people that are into tech, animation, illustration. So uh, if you have questions here that you don't want to ask because it's in a public space but want to um, talk to someone, have any questions, anything tech-based, jobs, anything like that, feel free to search the group on Facebook, Digital Cheltenham, add yourself, I'll add you in. And uh, there's loads of people there who are super helpful and happy to help. Um, this is actually my first talk ever, um, not you know, in general, but just in front of students. Uh, so if I start shaking or crying, it's probably because I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so uh, why am I talking about planning? So for me, planning is one of the most important aspects of being a developer. Um, and I say that because generally planning is often overlooked by developers and employees, and really it's the core of how you build a solution or a digital solution or work. Um, so good planning will inform every part of your project and help shape your workflow for the project moving forward and getting sign-off. And uh, planning is also kind of fun in places. So what do I mean by planning? Um, so when I talk about planning, a lot of people sort of think, oh, that's lots of sort of red tape or documentation that is done to satisfy some sort of weird criteria that a client has. Um, I've done you know, sort of risk analysis and things before, sort of having to write 200 words on what would happen if an earthquake hit the data center, which is completely ridiculous. Um, maybe not in San Francisco, but certainly here. Um, that's not the kind of planning I want to talk about. So, sorry, I'm just going to get a little drink. Uh, so what I want to talk about is functional planning. So, and functional planning is something that I think anyone working in the, the web industry, if they're a developer, a uh, project manager, account manager, um, can benefit from. So uh, out of everyone here, uh, who, who are developers strictly? Are there any developers? So you've got one, two, three, four. Okay, cool. Uh, designers? Just one? And what are well, the rest of you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be in the wrong presentation. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> but if, you, if you're planning to work with any sort of um, clients or companies or agencies or wherever where you have a, a certain goal to meet, uh, requirements to meet, then functional planning of how you're going to achieve those goals and how you're going to complete the work to meet those goals to a satisfactory level is really, really important. And employers will love you for being able to do that, even if you might not think traditionally that as a developer it's your job to plan or think about contingencies or um, make suggestions for improvements. Um, certainly, as a former person that would that had a team working under him and would employ people from universities or new starters, that was probably one of the the main qualities I would look for. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about it because I felt that as a student, I you could code and that was great, but I didn't really know what that meant in terms of how do I do that in a team or working in a company. Um, cool. So I'm going to carry on. So um, why is planning useful? I have. Uh, just talked about that. Um, <laughs> I didn't actually plan this presentation, which is fairly ironic. Uh, yeah, so basically, for me, planning provides a, a fixed point. That's one of the, the key components for client sign-off. So if you're planning to um, go and start a freelance on your own out of university, or if you have a particularly pernickety project manager, um, or <laughs> anything like that, um, Good planning and a functional specification will give you that um, scope to say, I have completed this job to what was required. Um, a lot of agencies that, e even today, that I work with uh, in a consultancy capacity still do not 
um, properly plan their products and require that sign off. And I'm sure, uh, I don't know if any of you do any freelance, but you might have experienced, say, uh, goalposts changing. So you get to an end of a project, the requirements have changed, and before you know it, you're spending three or four all-nighters working on something to get it completed. I don't know, maybe your lecturers do that, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so good planning will provide you a complete landscape of functionality for the development team. So if you're a developer, uh, if you take a beat and really review what you're trying to achieve, uh, you can often map out all the single components that you need to complete that project. So that might be, all right, I need to install web, uh, WordPress on a Linux server. Right, I need to uh, implement um, social integration into this blog. And all these components you can capture then and start looking at if there's gonna be any major issues or supply requests that will stop you completing your project. Um, also, this then leads into you allowing to organize your time to complete priority tasks. So often in the working world, you will have a deadline set by your team or that you will work together to, to come to and you will have to analyze your project and make sure that any issues that you can foresee are resolved. And if you're a developer who can do that, if you can go back to your project manager or your client and say, right guys, this is perfect, we can do this, it's all achievable, however, I need the following things, um, that's a, a really useful tool. Uh, so yeah, so I'm a developer, why do I need to plan? So again, employers love developers that can manage their time, communicate solutions and raise issues. Uh, a problem raised early can always be managed. So when you're starting out in a job, if, if you feel that there's something you can't do or you have a, a problem with something or there's, you can see an issue forming, if you talk to your client or your management team in advance, often they'll be able to work with you to get a solution. So when you're going into a job, don't be afraid to talk to people talk to your team and raise issues. Um, you can often identify hidden requirements. So again, server setup or uh, a different language or anything that on the surface seems simple but has complex underneath. Um, planning before you code promotes good design. So generally if you're coding or you can look at what the requirements are and make, make a solution to meet that. So uh, let's say you have a shopping cart if you've planned out your shopping cart, you will know that in some time in the future, you may need to switch from PayPal up to SagePay. So then you can design your code to be able to, in the future, be swapped out with this new gateway. Um, so that thinking about before you code what you need to code will give you, uh, will allow you to take a better approach. Okay. And um, also when you're doing large projects, it can be very overwhelming, especially when you're first starting. So if you've planned down into separate elements, uh, what you can do then is take these elements and just have that goal for the day. So each day you can achieve a bit more and it makes you just generally work faster and better as a developer. Um, so I've talked quite quickly there um, about loads of stuff, so sorry. Um, so I think basically what I wanted to try and talk to is how do you, how do you actually plan a project? Like how, when someone comes to you with a project, how do you look at um, doing everything to make sure that you've, you're meeting these requirements. So every company you're going to will have a different methodology for this. Um, generally, I find you always need to make sure you're capturing requirements. And so what that looks like is that will be a meeting with the client or the project manager. You'll need to talk through, uh, find out what the goals of the project are. So as an example, um, you have uh, an email from a potential client. The client is uh, someone who sells toasters to France. Okay, so in a normal situation, if you're not planning the project, if you're just kind of going ad hoc and you're in developer mode, you're thinking, right, that's great, okay. So I will need, uh, I will need a, a HTML website, I will need a PayPal cart, and I'll need an industry inventory. That's great, we'll get started. Um, the problems when you're not capturing all the requirements or when you're not taking time to plan and look at what's required is actually this client needs the website to be built with uh, French translation for everything. Um, so you're working through the project, everything's going great, the client's loving it. They've got one day until their deadline and they turn around and say to you, oh, this is really great. Uh, can, we, can we have it in French? At which point you go into panic mode and you miss the client's deadline. So part of that is developing a specification. So in there you have requirements for, does it need to be in French? 
what, lang what cart am I using? Does it need to be in PHP? Does it need to be in ASP? Uh, how am I going to, and have I got any ideas where I can make this uh, product more usable for your clients? So if they don't mention it being in French, you can turn around to them and say, maybe that's a good idea. Shall we look at that? Um, so generally, how I would do things is I'd have that conversation initially with the client, and then I would move on to generating a functional specification. Um, and that can vary depending on project, the size of the projects. But essentially what that is is a complete laundry list of all the functionality that's required. Uh, at which point, you then agree that with your project manager or your client, um, and that gives you your fixed point for sign-off. Uh, once the specification has been created and everyone's agreed with it and signed off, what you can start doing then is designing any sort of user flows or wireframes that might be uh, relevant um, and help if you do have a design process that you need to work through. And then these wireframes can then be shared with the client because what you essentially want to do is have uh, the functional specification match up to the uh, match up to the visual so the client can start seeing how this is physically going to work. And there's a lot of great tools which I think hopefully some of the guys will start um, talking about in other, in other talks. Um, da -da -da -da. So once you have your client sign-off buy-in, everyone's really happy with everything, um, you can move on to actually, as a developer, planning how you're going to work. So I don't know if any of you uh, know anything about agile development or, or sprints or anything along those lines. Heard anything like that? Anyway. Um, essentially, what that boils down to is you as a development team being able to prioritize tasks and set them so you have a weekly run of work you need to complete. Um, and that weekly run is then ordered and reviewed so that if there's any problems, any issues, you can go back up the chain and get them resolved. Um, so this is essentially, it's a, it's a review and repeat process. Um, and generally what you find from that process is that any issues that might come up, instead of them coming up at the end, where you're gonna get in a lot of trouble, <laughs> they come up nice and early so you can mitigate them. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so in terms of tools, you've got some great tools like um, Jira, which I'd recommend having a look at. That's, uh, it's very complicated, uh, it's very complex, but the Atlassian website uh, has loads of great resources on how to plan your projects or plan your development team, or plan your development time. Um, I'd certainly recommend reviewing it because it's a, like I say, it's a, it's a great asset. Um, you have Basecamp, which I don't know if some of you heard or say you use, but that's, um, essentially a list management tool, and you have uh, discussion boards where you can share resources. Again, if you're working in teams on um, university projects, that's a really good free um, resource to be able to share resources and plan and sort of move things forward. Um, Trello um, is a sort of a stripped down version of Jira where essentially you can just get into assigning tasks and planning how you're going to work. Um, and then you've got Toggle, which is time management, um, Mockflow, which is uh, a wireframe tool. Um, Sketch, which Andy uses, which is, again, you can use to generate your wireframes and user flows. And uh, Envision App, which is uh, a great app for taking any images that you create and putting them into a working prototype. So I'm just gonna very quickly just show you a general workflow. So this is um, the kind of documentation <laughs> that is very dry and boring to produce. Um, but this kind of detail is what gives you um, a complete overview of the project to be able to estimate and come up with any issues. Uh, this will be usually my first point of a large project to sign off and get any sort of uh, estimates or billing done. Um, and essentially is what is agreed in principle to be completed by the client. Uh, once this document is completed, I would move over into sort of a, a wireframing mode. Um, so this is Sketch. Um, essentially what I build is a low fidelity sort of wireframe of all of the important sections of UI, um, sort of ordering out uh, the content, how it's going to work in line with the specification. At this point, generally you'd be talking to a client and making any modifications and altering the, um, the plan as you go within boundaries. Uh, then I sort of move across, sorry, uh, into Envision App. Now, oh, hello. <laughs> there he is, sorry. No, not working now, brilliant. Uh, so Envision, <laughs> have a look online. Um, 
you can put all your images into here and actually move through and you can talk through the client and guide them through the process. So you can essentially have a working site or a working application which they can review and give you feedback on. Um, and then once that's completed, you can move into um, actually developing prototypes, the, the sort of, you know, the, uh, the version of the app. And with the good planning, you can have breakpoints where you come back to the client and talk to them and say, what do you think of this? How's this looking? And it always gives you an opportunity to fix issues, catch problems beforehand, and um, sell extra work. Uh, that's a picture of the A-team, sorry. Uh, yeah, and that is essentially, so in summary, um, thinking about your key requirements you're trying to meet is the most important thing. And as developers, if you can approach any job with a sense of what does the client want, how can I achieve that? Is there anything I can do that's better? Are there any problems that I'm going to face? And taking responsibility for uh, those problems is something that employers really look for and actually I think makes you uh, a better developer. Um, planning well can often lead to new opportunities. So if you plan well enough and say you need to put extra translations into a site, that, that can be more money. So you can generate more money for your business or off your clients. Fixed sign-off points are great because uh, clients can be terrible and they can often change the goalposts at the last minute. If you have a fixed uh, sign-off point in place, you know where you stand, you can stand your ground and you can ask for more money or more time. Um, and no nasty surprises. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, in summary, <laughs> that is my presentation, uh, super rambly, and it was better when I was practicing it, so I apologise if it wasn't really clear, but um, yeah, planning is good because uh, the A-team did it. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, any questions? Uh, okay, Andy? Who um, so, obviously, you don't have a lot of detail in that specification. Do you find that kind of sort of contract is, makes the project a bit smoother? Yeah. Time? I, I would say absolutely, I mean, you can always wing it. Um, so it, it comes down to how, it comes down to your client management, how relevant the client is. But I think for every project, I always will try to do a minimum um, amount of detail in it just to capture the main things, like what are my actual jobs to make sure this goes live. Um, the level of detail you go into is, is kind of up to you. Um, also, some people find it difficult to sell that into clients because they don't feel like they want to spend the time or money doing the planning. Um, however, I found that if you do have a client that isn't willing to spend time on planning, unless you're really stuck with them, they're usually better off not working with um, because they will sting you later on. For an example, I had a, um, a friend of mine had a, a website built, just a brochure site, few sign-up forms, um, and they got it done, outsourced in um, Nearshore, somewhere else, I don't know. Um, but he sent it to me, he said, oh, it's not, it's, not, it's not turning up in Google, I'm not getting any SEO, I'm not getting any traction, can you have a look at it? And I had a look at it, and the whole site was a complete mess. There was loads of duplicated HTML pages, um, there was like five or six different PHP mail scripts, um, all doing the same thing, loads and loads of stuff. So I fired him back an email like, oh, okay, it's a bit of a mess, but here's what we can do. Um, can you just let me know exactly what pages you want on this site? So he said, yeah, yeah, it's fine, here you go. And I went, oh, that's great, I'm gonna do it. So popped it into Git, deleted all the uh, extra pages that looked superfluous, sort of double checked them, said, is this okay? Uh, and he went, yeah, 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 put it live. Uh, a week later, I got a phone call. Uh, oh, all right, mate, did you delete the registration page? Uh, yeah, yeah, you said you did that. Oh, you didn't need that page. Oh, no, no, we need that page. It's just hidden from Google. Uh, that's where our marketing guy sends all our new clients. So because I broke the rules because it was a friend and I didn't spec it properly, they ended up losing sales, uh, I assume, uh, if they make any sales. So, yeah, so definitely, in answer to your question, I think going into that level of detail, that, that is a crazy level of detail because that is a really big project. But I think certainly one-fifth to one-sixth of your time on planning is, is time well spent because it will save you uh, basically angry clients or just getting absolutely nailed. <laughs> um, any other questions? Calvin, sorry. Yeah, I suppose uh, choose which rules you break carefully. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if, if you're, you're doing a lot of the planning up front, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you're getting into a project yeah. and you have like an agile approach to it, yeah. which will inevitably spit out different ways of doing it. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, you know, 
a quarter of the way into this and now actually it's not not coming out that way. So let's yeah. Try different. How, do you, how do you manage those kind of changes in, in scope? In, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Um, I mean, for me, it, it does come down to client management on that side of things. Um, in, in your planning, as long as there's, there's like different types of planning, so there's the technical planning where you, you have to hit technical uh, requirements, like you have to have, it has to work in IE9 or whatever, you have fixed like goals. But then I tend to be a little bit fuzzy with, as long as we're meeting the actual, so say so you've got to have a sign up that uses a particular API. If it turns out that as you're working that, oh, this isn't gonna work with our system. As long as you can find a workaround or you, you identify the issue straight away and talk to your client about it, I generally find that it, you, know, you, can, you can mitigate any problems. Because problems do happen when you're developing. You, know, you are always gonna come up against something where you haven't estimated enough time or you've, you've, you've misunderstood the request. Um, but I've always found with my clients that if you're honest with them about the issues that you're facing and they're confident that you've done the best you can to solve them, that you can turn it from a situation where potentially you could lose the client or lose the contract into a situation where sometimes you can make more money from the contract because you've had to say to them you need additional resource or but I don't know how helpful that is as an answer. But um, it, for me, the specification is just what are the goals that we need to achieve? And whichever way we can get to it, is it then a management issue in terms of managing your resource and managing your time? Um, sorry, anyone else? Uh, PJ? Oh, sorry. Did you? No? Sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, that's a difficult one because no client wants to hear, oh, I want to spend 25% of the budget writing this large document uh, telling me how to do my job. But um, <laughs> what I find is that if it's a really big project like this one particularly, I included the planning phase in the work and that was a cost. So that actually came in their invoice and it's like, and that comes through discussions with the client and informing them that you're gonna to need to do this level of diligence. Um, on much smaller projects like little WordPress sites or whatever, you know, the, the scope of this planning goes right down. Um, so generally that would be kind of pro bono, but then I might just sneak a few extra hours in development. Or I'll generally find that because I've planned it, I'm not, I'm not missing anything. So planning it, I'll do it for free, but then I will make up the cost later in the actual development. And you know, th that's the good thing about planning. Aside from if you're, if you're an employee, um, you look good, because um, you don't have to do all that particular writing, but if you're mentally thinking about every piece of functionality you need to build and what are the, the issues that could rise from that, or is there a better way, um, that helps them. But for a client, if you're planning and just spending that time, not just banging it out and doing it straight away, which is really tempting to do as developers, because you just want to get it done and get paid, but if you spend that extra time planning at the start, you often find that, oh wait, oh well, hang on, what if we did this? You know, what, you know, oh, are you gonna, are you guys gonna need this in five different languages? Maybe we can talk about that in a phase two. And so even that, I find it's almost like new business. You know, you start planning and you you see other opportunities. So that can then. So I, I think it's really something that if you're as a business, you should always practice. Um, and if you're an employee or someone going into a business that's you know, you're just reporting to a project manager. Um, it's really important in terms of just looking like you know what you're doing or being diligent, because no project manager wants to hear two days before a deadline, um, oh, I need this, or I need that, or I can't do this because of that. And it, if it's things that can be avoided, you avoid it. But it's those kind of problems that can lead to clients being lost or, or projects going awry. So I, I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about it. and. I did ramble loads, um, but I just wanted to talk to you guys about it. So when you go into businesses, you kind of got that in the back of your head that maybe that's something you need to, to look to do. Yeah, I think, sorry, no, go on. Um, I think that's one of the core components of any uh, product or service uh, that you would offer. And I, I think it's, it's something which we emphasize quite a lot here. It's, it, yeah. well, so. it's surprising how few agencies do it. Yeah. Um, it really is. There's, there are a few good ones in town. 
and you know they're all good agencies or whatever, but most of them are design agencies. So as your developers coming into it, you know, I, I used to be, I came into it as a developer, um, not a very good one, but a developer, but I still had that developer sort of, I, I know everything, uh, this is fine, I'm just gonna build this website. And I quickly learned that uh, actually like, you need to be able to work, on, you need to be able to review the, the product as a whole and raise issues. And that way you, you will rise up through the ranks and you will get, I think it helps your coding because you are, you're learning to, to, to stop and pause and think about what you're doing. And that goes right the way down to, you know, um, actual design, which design pattern you're gonna use, how you're gonna implement that up to high level stuff of just how do I put the website online, you know? So. I think um, in terms of selling it into clients, yeah. what we found is that you have these issues, you're doing a project and you're gonna have these issues that and the earlier you find those issues, yeah. the cheaper it's going to be to address them, which uh, is the absolutely. And so, yeah. so finding an issue in planning is cheaper than finding an issue in unit testing. Is yeah. Absolutely, and it's 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 a lifesaver for uh, as for developers just coming into it. If you don't have your own company, you don't have to deal with that issue. But if you take five minutes to plan, uh, the amount of times at my first job when I'd be like, eh, "This is going fine," I was just working, and then before I knew it, it was two days before the deadline. And I'd only done half the website, you know, and that's it's time management and all that sort of thing. That if you, if you plan it and you just have your little blocks, you just go like, oh, "I've got five more blocks to do," and you know, this is going to take me three days. Or like, oh shit, this is gonna take me eight days. <laughs> like I'm in loads of trouble here. If you know you're in trouble, it's a lot easier than um, just your manager bearing down on you like, is this finished yet? No, it's not finished. Okay, why not? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like those are really hard questions. So yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, all good? Any, any more? Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, in that situation where you've got a client that said, hey, hang on a minute, I thought you were going to include that. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I think, Imagine that's quite a uh, sort of tense moment. Uh, yeah, yeah. For both the client and the developer and the company. Yeah. Have, would you say you've been in a situation like that? Or oh, yeah. Do it loads. It yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gone about handling it? Uh, by having very long and uh, very. Um, uh, terrible conference calls with several <laughs> high-level managers. <laughs> like, oh yeah, no, that doesn't work. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but this is, and it took me a long time to learn, but having that sign-off point, that fixed sign-off point, y you kind of live and die by it because, y you know, if you haven't completed what you said you're going to complete, y you're kind of stuffed, like you haven't completed it. But on the flip side, if you don't plan it and you don't have that fixed sign-off point, a client in their head will have an idea of what's finished and you'll have your idea of what's finished. And they can be very different things. And then like you say, you, you just end up with a really awkward conversation where you end up talking to some, somebody who's paying your wage or you know, if you're in a company or a client who's your main source of money coming into the business and having to explain to them why they're wrong and you're right. And that should never be the case. It shouldn't get to that point. Like Calvin says, it's, uh, if you've done the proper planning, it's cheaper to sort out any issues. And, and clients really appreciate it. So they, they, do, they, they appreciate the transparency. And that, that's all they're looking for, generally, unless they're dicks. And then, in which case, you bin them off. <laughs> but yeah, so, that's my client management talk. I'm going to do that next, next time. In the agency days, Mm. It's like, how, how do you deal with those people? How do, do you, can you I, determine whether or not they're dick when you do the planet? Yeah, I mean, you, plan you do have warning signs, but honestly, I think even when I was working at the old agency where it was like a lot of big dicks uh, floating <laughs> around, um, they, they, were, they were cool if you were honest with them and if you planned it. The, the reason they become bad clients is usually because they've had bad service and any other developers they'll go to you know, we're a pernickety bunch. We like to sit in and just finish the code, like alone. Like, you've told me to do this website, I'm doing it. Your website's done, leave me alone. You know, the more you, if you plan, you're having that conversation with them. And I'm like, my main clients, I'm, I'm always talking to them. I have Skype on all the time. It can be a bit annoying, but uh, <laughs> those ones you just kind of block for the day or whatever, or sort of leave them off. But uh, 
yeah, no, it, 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 dealing with those people, you are always going to have bad clients. Um, but with good planning, I think it's easier for you to just say, I, I can't work with you anymore. And they will generally respect that. And they're not, you know, well, they're not, if they're a bad client and you do a bad job for them, that's much worse. So it's just about, you, you know, it's just about how you, how you get to that point where you can say, we're both happy. And a happy client will give you more work. A happy boss will promote you or give you a pay rise or, you know, do all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Have you had to compromise in a situation like that? Yourself, but not uh, so personally, but perhaps with other encounters within a company that... Uh, in, in terms of... So, whether it's the fact that, yeah, the client's actually run here, and hmm. what are we going to do about it? So, what, what, what sort of compromises have you um, yeah, I mean, there's, it comes down, there's always room for compromise, but, but at least you've got a fixed point to compromise from. Um, and it does, it, no, nobody wants to tell a client, no, you can't have that. But if it comes to a point, um, well, I'll give you an example. So uh, at my old agency, we had a really large client. Uh, they were a uh, clipper, boat race. Uh, I wasn't really, I think I was outgoing at the time, so I wasn't really involved in the project, but I kind of, had near to the ground of what was going on with it. And I knew that the planning had been done a bit at the start, but it quickly got removed just because they wanted to get started on the job and they wanted to get building on it and they wanted to get money coming in, which is something you, you, know, you have to deal with if you're working in that environment. Um, but then what happened is they had a very um, aggressive account manager on their side who was always pushing for more work and more changes. And what ended up happening is just the project went, ended up going about three or four months overdue. And if you're working in an agency with four or five staff working on a project, four or five months overdue is pretty catastrophic if you're not getting paid for that. So I think it's just having, you do have to make compromises and it gives you an opportunity to make a compromise and look good. Because you can say, look, that wasn't part of the agreement, but you know, I'm, I'm actually quite excited to do that bit of functionality or, or I want to learn this. Or, you know, it just gives you that opportunity to look good. Whereas if they feel that they're entitled to that anyway, you, you're giving them more rather than them, you know, giving them less and then telling them they can't have it or it's going to cost extra. So, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Typically, would you sorry, I'm loads of questions. <laughs> That's all right. Um, typically, would you say that's expected in a role of a web developer design agency? That's what they're, are you going to expect that? Uh, what, the, the demands or the... Yeah. yeah, I think definitely in... It depend, again, every agency is different, but certainly like a lot of the agencies that I've talked with, and it's probably because the type of agency that are looking, trying to talk to me as a consultant or like asking my advice are probably ones that haven't got used to digital yet or aren't specific, they're usually design agencies, so people who just do... are transitioning into digital. Um, <laughs> forgot what I was saying. Um, yeah, so that kind of demand is, comes from a land where changes take two minutes or are, are, are visual changes or changing a font or changing, adding a bit of text. Uh, whereas in the digital world, you cannot just add changes in because if you haven't planned your cut, well, I mean, you can if it's easy stuff, but if they turn around and say they want to completely change how a form works, you might as well have not written the form in the first place almost. You know, you've got to start again. So, um, those demands are something that you will have to deal with probably in an agency environment. And how you deal with them is by planning. When, when it come, if you have managers who don't do any planning and the work comes to you, your life is going to be difficult, uh, in, in my opinion. But if you approach those tasks, you can either approach them and just say, look, I'll just do what you say, and that's fine, because you're my boss. Um, in a client situation, though, you, you do have the opportunity to push back, and it's, it's, it's just communication and trying to take those demands and make them reasonable because you are the expert um, and I think a lot of people don't appreciate th that demands and changes, if not managed correctly, are incredibly dangerous to the stability of, like an example I said with my friend's site where I just made a quick change and uh, no more registrations for five days. Um, so yeah, basically. Is that, is that okay? Um, any any other questions? Anything else? No, all good. <laughs>